What's up guys, this is Demkeys and today I'm gonna teach you how to create a turn-based system. So let's begin. Click game object, 3D object, cube. This is gonna be our ground. So rename this to ground and change its position to zero on all axes and set its scale to 30 on X, 0.1 on Y and 30 on Z. Select the directional light and drag it down so it's not obstructing our view. Next, click game object, 3D object, cube. This is gonna be our player game object, so rename this to player and change its position to zero on all axes and drag it a little above the ground. Next, click game object, 3D object, sphere. This is gonna be our enemy game object, so rename this to enemy. Again, change the position to zero on all axes and raise it above the ground and place it beside the player game object. Now in the project panel, create a material call this ground mat and make two duplicates of it rename one duplicate to player mat and the other to enemy mat set the color for ground mat to something close to gray set the color for enemy mat to red and player mat to blue and then drag and drop each of these materials onto the respective objects so that's ground mat to ground enemy mat to enemy and player mat to player next create an empty game object and rename this object to turn based system. Now it's important that you write the name exactly how I've written it. I'll tell you the reason later. Add a new script to this game object, call it turn system script 09 and open it up in mono develop. Here type using system.collections.generic and then we need to create a new class. Type public class turn class 09 and add the system.serializable attribute to this class. Within this class, we need to create three fields, public game object, player game object, public bool is turn, and public bool was turned previously. Now in turn system script 09, type public list turn class 09. We're gonna call this list players group and create two methods, void reset turns and void update turns. In update turns, create a for loop for int i equals zero i less than players group dot count i plus plus within the for loop we want to check if not players group i dot was turned previously so basically if players group i dot was turned previously is false then we want to set players group i dot is turned to true and break the loop else if i is equal to players group dot count minus one basically if i is equal to the last index in the players group list and players group i dot was turned previously is true then we want to call reset turns i'll explain this later now in reset turns again we want a for loop for int i equals zero i less than players group dot count i plus plus Within the for loop, we first check if i is equal to zero, then players group i dot is turn equals true and players group i dot was turn previously equals false. Else, basically meaning if the value of i is anything except for zero, then copy these two lines and paste them here. In this case, we want to set both is turn and was turn previously to false. Next, in the start method, we want to call reset turns and in the update method we want to call update turns hit save go back to unity select the player game object and add a script called player move script 09 open it up in mono develop here type public turn system script 09 turn system public turn class 09 turn class public bool is turn and public key code move key in the start method type turn system equals game object dot find turn based system this is why i told you to type the name exactly the way i'm typing it because you need to type the name exactly the way it is over here in order to be able to find the object successfully so game object dot find it's going to find the the game object and then within that game object we want to get the turn system script 09 script next for each turn class 09 tc in turn system dot players group we want to check if tc dot players game object dot name is equal to this game object's name that'll basically tell us whether this game object is, is registered with the turn system and if it is then turn class equals tc so we are basically adding a reference of that turn class instance to this turn class 
and the update method type is turn equals turn class dot is turn. So we want to set the value of is turn to whatever the value of turn class dot is turn is. Then if is turn is true, then we want to check if input dot get key down move key. We are going to set the value for move key from the inspector. So if the user has pressed move key, then transform dot position plus equals vector three dot forward. So we want to move this object one unit forward. Then is turn equals false. Then turn class dot is turn equals is turn. So we are setting the value of turn class dot is turn to whatever the value of is turn is, which in this case is false. And turn class dot was turn previously equals true. So our script is done. Hit save. Go back to Unity. Now over here, the only value we want to set is the value for move key. In my case, I'm going to set it to A. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want. And then make a duplicate of this player object and move it a little to the side so you can see both the player objects and set the move key value for this object to s or again whatever you want but both of them have to be different now in the turn based system we want to register both of these players we'll use the enemy later on don't worry select the turn based system and currently we are trying to register two players so set the size to two this will create two elements and as you can see since this is a list of turn class 09 all the fields of turn class 09 are shown over here that's player game object is turn and was turn previously so drag and drop player into element 0 and this player into element 1 now before we play the game let's go back to turn system script 09 and take a look at how it's working first of all we are creating a public list of type turn class 09 the list is called players group turn class 09 is the class that we created here it has three fields public game object player game object public bool is turn and public bool was turned previously then in the start method we are calling the reset turns method in the reset turns method we have a for loop that runs for the length of our players group list and within the for loop we first check if i is equal to zero if it is equal to zero then we set players group i dot is turn to true and players group i dot was turned previously to false but if the value of i is anything other than zero then we set both players group i dot is turn and players group i dot was turned previously to false so what this is going to do is at the beginning since reset turns is being called in the start method it will set the is turn value of element zero to true and was turned previously to false and pretty much any other element in this list will have is turn and was turn previously set to false that's all reset turns does in the update method we call update turns in the update turns method, we have a for loop running for the length of the players group list. And within the loop, each time we check if players group i dot was turned previously is false, then we set players group i dot is turn to true. And then we break the loop so it doesn't go any further. Else if i is equal to, I already explained this part before, if i is equal to the last index of this list, which in this case is one and players group i dot was turned previously is true. I'll show you that scenario shortly. Then we want to call reset turns. So let's see this system in action. Go back to unity. Now that we have registered both of these players within the turn system, hit play. And as you can see at the beginning, reset turns was called. And so this player's turn is currently first because this player is in element zero. Now, since it is this player's turn, if you remember, I had set this player's move key value to a and this player's move key value to s so right now i'm going to press s and as you can see this player is not moving however if i press a since it was this player's turn this player moved forward once this player moved forward this player's is turn value was set to false and was turned previously was set to true the reason why was turned previously was set to true was because when update turns is called update turns is going to check in the list whichever players was turned previously value is set to false that player is going to get the turn next which is what happened over here since this player's was turn previously property was set to true so the next player got a chance because this player's was turn previously property is set to false and now when i try to move this first player the first player cannot move but when i try to move the second player the second player moves at which point reset turns is called again now let me explain to you how this 
small block of code is working. We first check if i is equal to the last index, which in this case is one. So we check if i is equal to the last index of this list and if players group i dot was turned previously is true. The reason we do this is because once element one has finished its turn, its is turn value will be set to false and was turned previously will be set to true. So the only way that this condition can evaluate to true or both of these conditions can evaluate to true is if the last player in this turn system has played their turn. Let's try adding another player to the turn based system. Make a duplicate of this player, bring it to the side and set the move key value to D. Increase the size of the player's group list and then in element two, drag and drop the new player that we created. Now, as you can see, all three players are getting their turns and when it is one player's turn, none of the other players can do their turn. All right, so, so far we have been providing the input so that the player can move. But what if you wanna add enemies, some sort of non-playable character? So select the enemy game object and add a new script to this game object called enemy move script 09. Open this up in mono develop. And what we are gonna do here is go back to player move script 09 and select all of these lines. Don't start from class, start exactly where I've started and end your selection at the end of the start method. Copy these lines and paste them here. Make sure to replace the start method that is already present in this script and delete the line where we create move key. The reason we do this is because the code is more or less the same with just a few small modifications. In the update method type is turn equals turn class dot is turn again just like the previous script and then if is turn is true. Now before we go any further with this create an i enumerator function call this wait and move and now go back to the if condition so if is turn is true then start coroutine wait and move now within the wait and move method type yield return new wait for seconds we want to wait for one second so one f next transform dot position plus equals vector three dot forward because we want to move this enemy one unit forward then is turn equals false then turn class dot is turn equals is turn turn class dot was turn previously equals true and finally stop coroutine wait and move so we are done with this script hit save go back to unity and make a duplicate of this enemy and drag it to the side so you can see both the enemies now we need to register both of these new players with our turn based system so change the size of the players group list to five this will add two new elements and drag and drop the first enemy and the second enemy okay i just realized that i forgot to explain the enemy move script it's real simple you already know what's happening in the start method because i explained it in player move script it's pretty much the same thing in the update method again we are setting the value of is turn based on turn class dot is turns value and then if is turn is true we call start coroutine and the coroutine we are trying to start is wait and move wait and move is our i enumerator method over here within this method we have yield return new wait for seconds which is basically going to wait for one second before continuing execution next we move this object one unit forward next we set is turn to false and then we set the value of turn class dot is turn to whatever the value of is turn is which in this case is false and then we set turn class dot was turn previously to true and finally we call stop coroutine so go back to unity and now that we have registered all of our players with the turn based system hit play so as you can see reset turns was called and it is currently our first player's turn so when i press a now was turn previously for this player is set to true and is turn for this player is set to true so now it is currently the second player's turn and now it is the third player's turn and when i move the third player then it will be the enemy's turn so the enemy will move after a one second delay and then after that enemy has moved it will be the next enemy's turn and that that en enemy will also move after a one second delay. As you can see, our turn-based system is working. Now, this system may not be bug-free. It may very well have its bugs, but it's definitely something to get you started off. It's not the only way to create a turn-based system, but again, it's something to get you started off. You can modify this system to further improve its functionality or to make it suit your needs. So yeah, that's it. 
all right guys i hope this video was helpful here's a clip of one of my other videos go check that out as well the links in the top right corner and in the description down below and if you'd like to check out more videos head over to my channel there's lots more videos over there if you'd like to help me out with the donation my paypal email address is mentioned on the screen and in the description down below don't forget to like share and subscribe leave your comments below and i'll see you guys next time